Um, my co-presenter, George Castro, unfortunately could not be here today, but wanted to go through some of the things that have happened since uh, we last presented on the state of the project and our roadmap in Detroit at KubeCon um, in October, and also present some of our roadmap for 2023 uh, do a little bit of a demo around some of our new capabilities around doing infrastructure as code governance uh, directly against source assets, and then uh, walk you through the contribution process uh, for those that might be interested in that. So out of curiosity, quick show of hands, uh, who here doesn't has not used Cloud Custodian? Okay. Well, this is to provide a quick overview of it. Um, it is an open source rules engine for cloud management. Um, it's simple YAML policy DSLs. It allows you to find interesting resources of, by doing arbitrary filtering on them. So uh, take an EC2 and set of EC2 instances in AWS, uh, find those that are on the available to the public internet that have IAM roles attached that allow them to create IAM users um, that don't have encrypted disks. And you can sort of chain these filters together in arbitrary ways. Uh, and then you can take a set of actions on them. Uh, and actions could be something like stop an instance or take a snapshot of it or change its role or security groups. Um, and you can combine those filters and actions sort of to create arbitrary policies. So you might target it towards um, doing um, security or you might target it towards doing better operations, taking on Mac backups. Uh, you might target it towards cost optimization, underutilized things. Um, and so it's trying it's to be a sort of a Swiss Army knife around uh, your cloud management. And additionally, it also binds into event-based execution. So now you're able to, as API calls are happening in your cloud provider, uh, actually introspect what's happening with those API calls and if the resulting resources are compliant to your policies. So that said, what's happened uh, since last October? Um, we've had about 70, uh, Authors contribute about 280 different commits across different uh, resources and providers. Um, we've added uh, two new core maintainers, Darren Dow from Intuit and Patrice Mishra from Capital One. And we've added a few new providers. Uh, providers and custodian are sort of like what you express your policies against. Um, we've added a Terraform provider for being able to evaluate Terraform source code um, inside of your pipeline. Um, and additional capabilities around that. And I'll actually do a deep dive demo on that. And then uh, we've had the contribution of the Tencent Cloud Provider. Uh, this is for those that are using Tencent Cloud. Um, and this is currently only does not support our event-based execution, but also supports multiple resources, filters and actions, the same as our other providers. So looking forward to our roadmap uh, in 2023, um, we've, been looking at how do we improve the policy authoring experience. So we've added policy testing for our shift left policies and we want to continue to add that back to our regular cloud providers um, on all, all the public clouds, as well as policy tracing. So we have some built-in tracing support that target the cloud providers native experiences around tracing, um, but we wanted to actually add that in as just a command line capability that's independent of the cloud provider so that it's a, it's a better baseline experience. And as part of that, also doing some policy debugging um, so that you can step through your policy execution and understand sort of what it's doing, how it's filtering things. Um, on the release engineering stuff, we've been doing a bunch more work uh, to sort of simplify our release process and make it more automated. And the goal here is to get humans out of the loop. We generally release once a month. Um, but that's currently, you know, a typically it's a maintainer that's going in and actually generating the release, testing the release, et cetera. And we're trying to get that completely automated such that um, it just happens on a clock and it's all system driven out of GitHub actions. Uh, and then additionally, more functional tests in CI. Um, we just recently this year got access to some additional cloud provider resources uh, from CNCF and we've been running our functional tests there. Uh, and we're hopeful to add additional providers as, um, as we get uh, additional resources with the CNCF. And uh, as far as the core, we currently uh, have uh, the core is sort of, uh, the current C7M package is sort of uh, hardwired into AWS. And 
for other providers, we don't want to carry those dependencies uh, into those other clouds. So we're trying to look at we're looking at trying to extract the the core code from that so that the other providers have a minimal dependency set. Um, and then additionally, uh, clock sitting you know, as part of being like a having a native cloud experience for each of the providers has direct integration with the cloud providers logging metrics tools. Um, we're looking as well as tracing, and we're looking at. How do we simplify that and potentially use uh, open telemetry support to abstract that out so that we don't have to carry forward on individual implementations for every provider, which becomes more relevant as we've been adding new providers. Um, looking at some of the providers, um, so uh, we have Kubernetes admission controller support, but I think there's been questions. Uh, it, we currently label it beta and it's currently fairly synchronous. So looking at doing a new implementation of that uh, admission controller to, and this is both validating and mutating, uh, to support better concurrency uh, for production execution. Um, and then additionally, we have a, and a separate AWS provider than the main one called, uh, it's based on the CloudFormation's Cloud Control API, which is sort of gives us fairly generic uniform resource coverage across all the AWS resources um, one additional capability that we'd like to add to that provider is being able to do preventative support. So uh, in the same way that we were doing shift left earlier in the pipeline uh, pre-deployment, uh, we also want to add that same capability for uh, AWS cloud control. And then on the shift left side, we, we've currently t started with Terraform. We feel like it's got great, fairly good universal coverage uh, and or significant usage, let's say. Um, across the different providers as well as being available across uh, all the providers. Uh, but we want to go ahead and add additional languages based on what community feedback is and what people are interested in. And we've heard clear interest in both CloudFormation and Kubernetes Manifest. Um, and then one delta to sort of our standard um, uh, ex policy sets. So normally in Cloud Studio, we for the different providers, we provide lots of examples and documentation around types of policies you can do, but we don't provide sort of an out-of-the-box uh, supported set of policies. Uh, with ShiftLeft, we're going to actually change that and focus on giving folks an out-of-the-box experience um, with a set of policies that they can use. Uh, and then looking at potentially new providers, um, there was some community interest in Oracle Cloud as well as an uh, HP sort of web service provider generically that can be bound to uh, do, doing policies against um, any SaaS service. Looking directly at some of the cloud providers, um, uh, we have uh, a few contributors, uh, larger organizations that have, are, have a backlog of contributions for Azure and GCP. So uh, I think when we went through them, they had about, mm -hmm, probably about 200 pull requests um, in pipeline. Uh, so we expect to see additional Azure and resources and GCP resources. Um, and then looking at trying to get the Azure SDK slimmed down, we've been tracking upstream with Microsoft on this because the current Azure SDK um, sort of blows up our Docker image and uh, it's typically about a gigabyte. Um, they're currently in progress on slimming out in the individual SDKs. Uh, it's, it's effectively just a lot of generated code and it's trying to make it smaller and more lightweight. Uh, on the AWS side, um, we're trying to s value from is how you support sort of exception management. We currently support S3 and, and arbitrary URLs. Uh, we're looking at supporting DynamoDB and being able to add a query using um, CQL syntax uh, directly into your policy to be able to uh, source exceptions um, or valid values vocabularies directly from DynamoDB, as well as being able to do better fuzzy IAM statement matching um, across the different resources and um, that have embedded IAM policies as well as IAM principles. Okay, so I wanted to talk about shift left. So super excited about this. This is sort of how do we, mostly custodian is applying things at runtime. So even the event-based real-time remediation capabilities are based on something's actually been provisioned in your cloud and you're they're now going to um, inspect what's happened and apply changes. And in certain contexts, you know, um, you, you need to be in the runtime, like uh, certain cost optimization policies, you need to look at the metrics for utilization, and that requires sort of a time basis for it to live to be able to evaluate that. But being able to apply uh, policies and governance directly within the developer pipeline generally leads to increased productivity, 
Um, and in the, in the general sense, all problems are easier to fix the, the closer you are to, the, to their source. So in the same way that static typing helps us write better code, um, being able to apply policies uh, sort of pre-commit allows us to do the same. So the three different contexts here are, let's see, is that readable? Um, are going to be uh, sort of pre-commit, uh, where I'm just on my developer workstation and then pre-merge, uh, which we'll go into in a second. But effectively, uh, I am just about, let me first show you what these policies actually look like as well as the Terraform. So I've got a simple module here that's just creating a, a VPC uh, a security group and an EC2 instance. Um, and this EC2 instance is attached to a security group that allows for sort of wide open ingress. So if I switch out to the policy, the custodian policy, and what does that look like? Um, I basically have here a custodian policy that is looking for a particular resource, EC2 instances, and is applying a set of filters to find sort of um, if it's attached to a security group that also has an ingress permission that allows for wide open access. So when I go to run it, um, it tells me that uh, I've run a few policies and that this particular resource has failed um, and it's sort of giving me the exact source line so I know where I can go fix it. Uh, the, the experience is intended to be developer centric and hence sort of operating directly on Terraform source and this is inclusive of all the Terraform interpolation, variables, conditions, includes, um, and being able to be respectful of all that so that we can track back to the originating source. So we also, so for this uh, provider, we've also added a dedicated CLI, um, and that's really just to try to help, uh, create, since we're no longer, uh, typical custodians are sort of in an operator mode on the CLI uh, and targeted towards administrators, whereas uh, C7M left in this context is targeted towards developers and providing a developer-oriented experience and workflow, as well as being directly integrated into CI pipelines. So if we wanted to look at a CI pipeline, do, 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 do. Um, I've got a CI pipeline here that's got, uh, that's had C7M left integrated in and it's failing in CI and I can look at that and see the actual change. So this is sort of the pre-merge workflow when you, know, you go to submit a pull request and it's really about informing the rest of the code reviewers on what's actually happening. But most people don't wanna dig through CI logs, so directly we also support um, doing code annotations on code hosting. So here I've got um, I've, the c 7 left output when it was in CI directly annotates the code on the pull request to show what it's, what part is failing, uh, and that's generally to help the reviewer. So uh, I added a comment here after seeing this that it should use a different security group. And then from a CD perspective, uh, as you go to do deployment, then you typically are providing a different set of variables. You can pass those in directly to c 7 and left when you run it to provide that additional context. Now c 7 and left here doesn't require any cloud credentials. Um, the intent is that the developer doesn't necessarily have access to that production environment. Um, they may just have access to a local development environment and that you can provide those, um, those different environment credentials um, via, via variables. Uh, sorry, different content uh, values um, that might be enforced in those different environments. All right, so switching back. Do, 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 do. Okay, uh, and so that sort of covers off on sort of pre-commit. Uh, and then on the authoring experience, um, so we've added a few things to this. One is that you can write policies that sort of wildcard through, um, typically in custodian because we're operating against the cloud providers. We have to query resources, we have to uh, do additional fetching. So typically a, a policy is against a single resource. Um, with uh, evaluating infrastructure's code assets and source on disk, we're able to do a couple different things, uh, effectively because we have the entire, um, the entire graph sort of in memory, we're able to do policies that 
a target multiple resources. So you can do like a glob and do like a, a single tag check policy or label check policy against all resources. Um, and then you can also do arbitrary graph traversal. So we support um, effectively going from any node to any node in the graph. So in the example we had before, we were going from an EC2 instance to a security group to a permission that security group. And you can do that across uh, any set of resources that are connected. Um, and that's in and inclusive of respecting all the Terraform variability and references. Uh, and then additionally, we've built, added in built-in policy testing. And this is currently only for C7 and left, but we're looking at how do we target this towards runtime providers. Um, and this is basically providing a Terraform uh, that, that the policy will evaluate against and then a expectation uh, assertion language that is um, that effectively validates that the different checks have succeeded or uh, that and fails if there's any uh, findings that were not asserted as well as if any assertions were not met. So I think that George also wanted to have this go through, what does it look like to contribute to custodian? Um, so typically on custodian, um, we run everything out of our make file um, and that helps us sort of drive across all the different resources uh, and providers that we have. Uh, make test is sort of the basic. Uh, we've also had make format, make lint. Um, the source tree itself is sort of laid out um, with the most of the providers being in the tools section. Um, and you've got Azure GCP, Kubernetes, uh, C-SPAN and left, um, as well as various other sort of operational tools that are helpful. Mailer for notifications, C-SPAN and org for running across many accounts. And uh, from a, making a pull request perspective, uh, we typically run this all against uh, CI metrics uh, of different providers, inclusive of building docs and Docker images. Uh, our docs are all built with Sphinx. We support both restructured text and Markdown um, and you know, welcome contributions on that regard. But, oh, I've got a feeling test. Oh, I didn't have a module installed. Um, well, that's sort of an update on where we're looking at going and what we've been up to lately. Uh, if there's any questions, I'm happy to take them. <laughs> any questions? Go for it. Today it works, uh, the question is, is does the C7 and left work, uh, work with CloudFormation or just Terraform? And the, the answer is today it works just with Terraform. Um, it is designed to be multi-IX source format. We're targeting CloudFormation next. I'm hopeful we'll get there by end of May. Uh, and then also targeting Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes is a little bit uh, easier just because of the runtime is the same as the source definition. Uh, with CloudFormation, um, we're also, tr uh, it'll be parallel, it, it will be based on the AWS cloud control. So we're also trying to see if we can uh, mirror the IX source format to some of the runtime format. And for CloudFormation, the runtime provider for AWS cloud control that we have uh, effectively is the same syntax as CloudFormation, actually uses the CloudFormation schema registry. So looking at doing CloudFormation support soon. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you all. I hope you have a good KubeCon.